All right, let's connect the Gauging Demo Vision Assistant script to the associated Express VI in LabVIEW. Just do a quick recap of the script itself. I have this object that I've converted to grayscale. I've done a grid calibration. That file is located right here. It's a PNG file. In the step after that, I'm correcting the image based on that grid calibration. I found these two edges of the object. Use the caliper to find the intersection of those two points. And then I've defined my coordinate system based on the intersection of those two points and then the line associated with the right side of the object. I've measured the width of the object at its base current distance is 6.74 centimeters. I've set up two regions of interest to find the circle center locations for circles A and B. I found the straight edge associated with the bevel and then have taken these three measurements. The angle between the bevel edge and the base edge, the distance between points A to 9, so that'd be the distance between the two circle centers, and then I found the perpendicular projection established by this line, points 10, 11, and then this third point, finding the perpendicular distance from that baseline out to the circle center for circle A. There are five measurements available, and I'm interested in only three of those. The angle, the distance between the two circles, and then that perpendicular projection distance. Now to configure my indicators and controls, I need the file path for the calibration grid image. I need the output from the step that measures the base width, and then I need the results from my single caliper step. Now you'd be clicking finish at this point. I'm hitting cancel because I've already de defined this earlier. Let me create a constant for my file path. If you look carefully, you see that it's auto enlarged the subdiagram, which I don't want to do. So instead, well, what I will do is create a control and then move that somewhere so that way when I change it to a constant, it doesn't disturb the existing subdiagram size. What I'm going to do is replace that with slash u. So now it's going to be referring to the USB flash drive on the MyRio. All right, so that is ready to go. The distance from measuring the width at the base of the object, this is just a simple scalar value. Create an indicator for that. And the output from Calibrate is a little bit more elaborate. This is a two-dimensional array simply because there are so many values that are possible to be generated from this calibrate step. Now I've placed these as indicators just straight out from the ExpressVI so that we can talk through a little bit what those results look like and figure out how to pull off the individual values. Let me go ahead and run this. And if you look carefully at the measurements, you see that their values kind of fluctuate a little bit with time. That's because I'm looking at the live processing here. Let's take a peek at the uh, analyzed image from the vision script. I'm interested in these four values that I've just indicated here. One of those is very easy to get at. The indicator already exists. We have to do a little bit more labor to pick out the values from the two-dimensional array. Let me begin by placing an instance of index array. I'm going to place a zero constant right here and then pull down to expose a couple more outputs. And at this point, these three outputs, one, two, and three, these are one dimensional arrays for each of the three columns of that two-dimensional array. Now you might recall that two of the values that I need are in the very first column, which would be column zero. 
So with this index array, I'm saying look at the first column, pick off the first two elements that you see. And I'll create uh, two different indicators for those. The first one, if you look back at the vision script, was the bevel angle. And the second element was the distance between the two holes. Do a little bit of clean up and get the right name on there. This would be hole distance. And now I look back at the third column. So I'm picking off the third column. And then I need to say go down to the third row, which would be row number two, because we start out with indexing at zero. And I create an indicator for that one. This would be the perpendicular perpendicular projection distance. All right, let's bounce back to the front panel. I'm going to go ahead and run with these modifications and see whether or not we've properly extracted these values from the two-dimensional array. All right, angle is picked off from here. Whole distance picked off from right there. And perpendicular distance was picked off from this value right there. Now, if we look at the value just to the left, you see that it was exactly the same. So let me nudge the object here a little bit. Now we see 2.81 does match that one. This is some uh, different value showing up right there.